Today on Spiritual Awakening Radio, an introduction to Radhaswami, the Radhaswami faith, also known as the Path of the Masters. During a previous program titled An Introduction to Sant Mat, I described Sant Mat as an ancient spiritual path, a mystical path, a Gnostic path, dating back to ancient India. And that during the 19th century, a saint by the name of Tulsi Sahib of Hathras coined the term Santmat for this path and popularized this term Santmat. The Radhaswami faith is a branch of this same Sant tradition of India. Some background about Sant Radhaswami Sahib, also known as Seth Shivdayal Singh, and also affectionately known by his guru name, Swamiji Maharaj. Swamiji Maharaj, or Seth Shivdayal Singh, was born August 24, 1818, in Agra, in the district of Uttar Pradesh, India, and passed on June 15, 1878, also in Agra. Growing up, at the age of five, Swamiji was sent to school where he learned Hindi, Urdu, Persian, Gurmukhi, Arabic, and Sanskrit. But a background in education with languages, specializing in languages. Swamiji's family included his father, mother, mother-in-law, and sister, and eventually, of course, his wife, Narani Devi, also known as Radhaji. They were followers of Param Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras. Tulsi Sahib of Hathras was the family guru. Swamiji's family were all followers of Sant Mat, all initiates of Tulsi Sahib and attended his satsang. Swamiji Maharaj became Sant Sat Guru of Sant Mat of the Radhaswami faith. Adherents believe him to be the incarnation of the Supreme Being, given the name Radhaswami, which means the Lord of the Soul, a very high holy name of the Supreme Being. The Sant Sat Guru in Radhaswami, or the Radhaswami faith, is the true living master who is a representative and conduit of the Supreme Being, Radhaswami, on earth. A word about sons of God and incarnations of the Supreme Being. According to the Sant Darya Sahib mission website, Sat Purush, or the Supreme Being, sends his sons to the world to liberate living beings from the clutches of Kal, unquote. Kal is a term for the Lord of Illusion, Lord of Maya, Lord of Death. Sat Purush is a name for the Supreme Being. So, the view is that the Supreme Being sends these advanced souls into the world to communicate with souls engrossed in this plane of samsara or illusion to liberate them. The living masters act as conduits or co-workers in the divine plan to liberate souls that find themselves attached here in this creation. Swamiji Maharaj grew up being part of the Sant Mat Satsang founded by Param Sant Tulsi Sahib, which had branches or satsangs in Hathras, Agra, Lucknow, and several other cities. Swamiji and his wife Radhaji were initiates and followers of Sant Tulsi Sahib, as were their families and extended families. A bit more about Swamiji growing up. We know that he was taught a lot about languages. Swamiji also devoted much time in meditation. Swamiji's mystical meditation room within a room, and we too can follow Swamiji's example. We may not have a cave necessarily, but I really like his approach of having a darkened meditation room, a kind of cave on demand, if you will, a room in one's house, a special room devoted to meditation. 
The following is a reading from the book Biography of Babuji Maharaj, published in Agra. And it, in this particular, sen- this, this particular session, describes something of Swamiji's childhood. Quote, From childhood, Swamiji Maharaj used to shut himself up in a small room which is at the back of another room on the ground floor of his house. For light and air there is a small aperture, otherwise no noise can reach within. The room still exists in a renovated form and is considered as one of the most sacred and hallowed of places." I have photos of this room within a room in the bottom floor of Swamiji's family home at uh, Panigali in Agra. I can send you a copy if you like. Listen for my email address in a bit. I have actually uh, many photos of this home, the whole house, various floors, various rooms. Uh, But most of all, I was interested in acquiring photos of this wonderful room within a room, Swamiji's meditation room from childhood. It's the family home there on uh, Panigali in Agra. And uh, he inherited his family home, and uh, it's a kind of holy site of the Radha Swami faith. Swamiji also used to conduct initiations in that room. Huzur Maharaj, Rai Salagram, and Baba Jamal Singh, two very famous initiates of Swamiji, were initiated in that very special meditation room. After the death of his initiating guru, Sant Tulsi Sahib, in 1843, Swamiji Maharaj allied himself with Gudhari Das, or Gudhari Sahib, as the next spiritual master in the Tulsi Sahib Satsang. He donated and gave substantial material support to Sant Gudhari's spiritual mission, which was based in Lucknow for a number of years, according to the biography of Swamiji Maharaj and according to the professor Daniel Gold, who has done extensive research and published the book The Lord as Guru, Hindi Sants in the North Indian tradition. And other sources as well mention this. Swamiji attended Sant Gudhari's satsang between 1843 and 1860 and was closely affiliated with him. After Tulsi Sahib's successor, Sant Gudhari, after Sant Gudhari's passing in 1860, this is when Swamiji Maharaj officially began his own public spiritual mission and open to the public satsang in Agra. Though it should also be said that much earlier in the 1850s, Swamiji gave talks at a local Sikh temple or Gudwara near his home in Agra, and also during the 1850s held private satsangs in his family home at Panigali in Agra. And uh, certain prominent disciples of his, such as Huzur Maharaj Raiselagram and Baba Jamal Singh, were initiated during that period and were part of that original private home satsang of Swamiji held during the 1850s. But it was after the passing of Sant Gudhari Sahib in 1861, that's when the Radha Swami satsang officially opened its doors to the public. The surviving writings of Swamiji Maharaj. The esoteric teachings is a very special book. It's actually a book within a book, a special section of Sarbachan Radhaswami poetry describing all of the planes of consciousness. It's a very amazing collection of esoteric teachings. And originally there was a book called Sarbachan Radhaswami poetry published as one single volume, but soon became divided into two separate volumes and those are Sarbachan Radhaswami Poetry Volume 1 and Sarbachan Radhaswami Poetry Volume 2. Those are amazing volumes of the mystic poetry and hymns of Swamiji. Out of this world, mystical poetry. And there is the Sarbachan Radhaswami Prose, which is divided into two parts. 
Part one of the prose is actually an abstract of the teachings of Sant Radha Swami Sahib, or Swami Ji Maharaj, authored by his famous disciple and successor, Hazur Maharaj Rai Salagram. Part two of the prose is a collection of the sayings of Swami Ji Maharaj given in the Agra Satsang. There is also Swami Ji's letters to Hazur Maharaj. There also is a surviving single letter to one of his brothers, one of uh, Swami Ji's letters to uh, his brother, one of his brothers. A, a lot of other letters got dumped down a well, and some of that, you know, a lot of material got lost. That's another story, the, the subject for another podcast, perhaps. The mystery of Swami Ji's well. A lot of other letters and other things got dumped down a well, but what I'm sharing with you now is the list of surviving writings of Sant Radha Swami Sahib. Also on the list of surviving writings is the elucidation of the Japji, a commentary by Swami Ji Maharaj on Guru Nanak's morning prayer. Last words of Swami Ji Maharaj is another document. And there are a couple of selections of poetry and hymns. There is Artiyan, selections from Sarbachan, Radhaswami poetry, and Prem Bani, hymns sung during satsangs and special occasions. And there is another collection, Nayamawali or Nyamavali, shabs or hymns from the Sarbachan, Radhaswami poetry, and Prem Bani hymns of Hazur Maharaj, and those are recited daily or frequently. Those are the writings. I have online a Sant Mat e-library, and there is a Radhaswami section of that library. And in that section, there is devoted uh, quite a bit of space to all of the surviving writings of Swami Ji Maharaj, which you can read for free online. And I also review some other translations, like the M.G. Gupta translation of the Sarbachan poetry and prose, which is not available for free online, but is definitely worth getting, as it's a great English translation of the Sarbachan. Send me an email, and I can send you a link to my Sant Mat e-library, including the Radhaswami section, specializing in the Sarbachan and other writings of Swami G. Maharaj. My email address is james at spiritualawakeningradio.com Swamiji Maharaj in the book called Prose, Section 2, Sayings of Swamiji Given in Satsang, said, In the present time, the, the jiva or soul is unable to do anything except the bhakti or devotion of the satguru and the practice of suratshab yoga or inner light and sound meditation. Swamiji says, if anyone resorts to other means or methods, it's like beating about the serpent's hole, which will not kill the serpent. The proper and effective means of catching the serpent of the mind, or controlling the mind in meditation, is devotion to the living master, the Satguru, and practice of Shabd, meditating on the inner sound. By no other means can it be subjugated, says Swamiji Maharaj. Once again, the, the analogy of the snake charmer, I think, applies here. The snake charmer plays his recorder. The snake coming out of the basket is enraptured by the sound of the recorder. And Swamiji is saying here, in Sarbachan prose that when we attempt to meditate the mind is very difficult and keeps us from going very far within keeps us from really delving into an exploration of inner space but the mind the serpent mind can be charmed can be controlled by the inner sound so the supreme being is the ultimate snake charmer causing the mind to finally relax, making it possible for one to go within during meditation. 
Swamiji says a million other methods will fail to tame the mind. It will submit only by listening to that melody. The yogis practice their own methods, while the learned are busy with knowledge and discussion. Ascetics wear themselves out with penances, and celibates with their struggle against lust. Priests read and recite the scriptures. They too are off course, wasting their energies in learning and preaching. Intellect and cleverness are of no avail. Scholars have to repent in the end. No other practice will work for you. Only the practice of Shabd will unite you with God, says Swamiji Maharaj. The inner sound will tame the mind like nothing else can. The teachings of the Radhaswami faith beginning with the four sats, S-A-T-S, the four sats, or eternal truths or realities of the Radhaswami faith. Sant Sat Guru, Sat Shabd, Sat Song, and Sat Anurag are the four sats. Number one, Sant Sat Guru, the living master, the true qualified competent teacher. Two, Sat Shabd or Sat Nam, the true name, the true sound of the Supreme Soul. Three, Sat Song or true association, true spiritual community of master and students on the path. And four, Sat Anurag or true sincere love for the Supreme Being and the Sant Sat Guru. As Hazur Maharaj Raisalagram writes in the very first Radhaswami book in English that reached North America near the beginning of the 20th century, by sincere love is meant a strong, fervent desire and perseverance to approach the Supreme Being. This desire should outweigh all worldly desires. Azura Maharaj also says that meditation practice of this type is most effective if approached with an attitude and feeling of love relating to this tradition of the lover and the beloved. Like you read, if you read Rumi poetry, one of the few mystics ever quoted by Swamiji was Rumi. And so this is very much not only the path of discipline and meditation, but a path of love and discipline will only take you so far approaching meditation with a spirit of love opens the door faster concentrates the mind better helps you reach the third eye center sooner love is the key that unlocks the door to the kingdom of the heavens uh, there's a lot of teachings in the Sarbachan poetry and prose and other writings of the Radhaswami faith about love being the way to get there from here, to make the most effective approach to meditation practice in order to reach, after all, the ocean of love given the name God or Radhaswami. Devotional practices of the Radhaswami faith one, Simran, the repetition of the mantra of the holy name. Two, Simran and Dion together, the repetition of the holy name, along with visualizing the form of the living master. Three, Bhajan, listening to the sound current. Four, recitation of holy books or listening to their recital in satsang, the spiritual meetup, intelligently. Five, Discussing the principles of the Radhaswami faith or listening to such discussion. Here we are right now doing that. Six, thinking about and reflecting on matters pertaining to the Radhaswami faith and its practices and pondering them. And seven, examining the ways of one's mind and senses daily, keeping them under control as far as possible. Or one could say, keeping a mental diary a self-introspection time to evaluate and self-correct on a daily basis. That's the seventh 
devotional practice of the Radhaswami faith. You're hearing Spiritual Awakening Radio today, an introduction to the Radhaswami faith. After this break, we'll explore the moral teachings of the Radhaswami faith and various teachings and spiritual readings, the three essential teachings, the moral teachings of the Radhaswami faith, a beautiful prayer of Radhaswami faith, the nature of consciousness, this and more. Stay tuned. Today on Spiritual Awakening Radio, an introduction to the teachings of the Radhaswami faith. The following is a Radhaswami prayer composed by Shiv Brat Lal and published in the book Light on Ananda Yoga. O August Radhaswami, Lord of the Soul, Thou Living Self and Living Master, Beneficent Father and Mother of all, be merciful, make us thine own, and thus save us from the snares of time. Past are the golden age and others, unknowing of the heavenly melody proper. Yet now art thou merciful in this hard, dark age, to chant in loud and lucid strains the sacred word, O Lord, having descended into this plain below, helpest Thou the living entities to span the worldly ocean across, to cast off the Trinity and reach the fourth abode, whence the living name unfolds, and the living mastership. Bathed in glory and effulgent light, Thy servant tenders this solemn petition. Grant us even the regionless region, the chief abode, the sphere of bliss, the holy refuge at thy feet, my Lord. A prayer of Shiv Brat Lal, published in Light on Ananda Yoga. This is on the nature of consciousness by Baba Fakir Chand of the Radhaswami faith. Every one of us is a bubble of consciousness. I am a bubble of supermost consciousness. That is what my realization is. This is what I have gained. Now what I feel is that there is one infinite supermost element. From it, when it moves, sound and light come out and from that light and sound this creation takes place cosmic rays and many other types of rays come out of this light and sound and all this gross matter is made so it is the will of that supreme power everything is oozing out of it and is merging back into it Baba Fakir Chand These are some moral teachings of the Radhaswami faith, composed by Shiv Brat Lal, also from Light on Ananda Yoga. Published in English originally back in 1981 by Sant Bani Ashram, as a paperback book and still exists, still survives as a PDF file. Moral teachings of the Radhaswami faith, do unto others, this sounds familiar, do unto others as you wish others to do unto you. 
that action which which helps the approach to the holy feet of Radhaswami is good and that action which creates separation or distance is bad do whatever you like but do not wound the feelings of your neighbors with taunting terms and wounding words religious discussion should be avoided for therein is greater danger of wounding a man's heart than in anything else do not force your ideas on others it is undesirable wait till the seeker has acquired the necessary development of mind clemency love tolerance and happiness should be the characteristics of a devotee's life happy mood does more work than anything else love should be centered in the ideal love which is not grounded on the ideal leads one astray love a man but love with unselfishness and warmth of mind keep your deed word and thought under your control lest they wound someone a deed done to injure an individual is like a sword stabbing hard. Foolish words spoken at random are pointed arrows which make some man's heart their target. So beware of speaking random words. If you are great, neither give an affront nor hear it. If you are small, let humility be your refuge, but see that you do not lose your self-respect. Man's superiority lies in the greatness of his soul, and not in pomp and public show. Be man entirely and whole, and in everything. Some Moral Teachings of the Radhaswami Faith by Shiv Brat Lal Found in his book Light on Ananda Yoga <laughs> Three Essential Teachings of the Radhaswami Faith by Huzur Maharaj Rai Salagram Bahadur 1. First of all, he should have belief in the fact that merciful Radhaswami is the Supreme Being and is omnipotent and is always present in every individual. 2. Or secondly, each soul is a particle or wave of the Supreme Being, just as the ray of the sun is an emanation of the sun. Thirdly, there is no way accepting the practice of Surat Shab Yoga which could lead one easily and without any obstruction to the original abode. Three essential teachings of the Radhaswami faith according to Huzur Maharaj. What a radical teaching that is. Each soul is a particle or wave. The Hindi term is ansa. The soul is a particle or wave of the Supreme Being just like a ray of the sun is an emanation of the sun. Other spiritual masters have used the analogy of the drop and the ocean. The ocean is God and each soul is a drop from that divine ocean. Stay tuned for more Spiritual Awakening Radio coming up. Introduction to the Radhaswami Faith today on Spiritual Awakening Radio. On the origin, usage, and meaning of the sacred name of God, known as Radhaswami. Radhaswami means Lord of the Soul. 
Radha is feminine and means soul. Swami is masculine and means Lord. So both feminine and masculine are combined together with this name Radha Swami. The founders of the faith have a few allegorical interpretations to put forward to explain the two components of the word Radha and Swami. The second guru, Huzur Maharaj, says that the Supreme Being may be compared to an ocean. A creative ocean cannot be perceived without commotion. The first wave of the endless ocean is Radha. The original current is not different from, but is identical with, the ocean itself. And as it comes out, so it is ever drawn towards it. The creative ocean therefore is Swami, and the first original wave, just identical to the ocean, is Radha. The two together form the supreme ocean, full of spiritual bliss and truth, thus Radha Swami. The Radha Swami faith is the religion of pure spiritual love. Love denotes two components, the beloved and the lover. The prime source of all love and spiritual energy is the beloved and is therefore known as Swami or Lord. The first wave of love and spiritual energy arising from its source and then being attracted towards it again is the lover and therefore is known as Radha. The supreme love is Radha Swami, identifying both the components and fusing them into one. A passage from Agam Prasad Mathur found in the book Radha Swami Faith, a historical study. In the Radha Swami Faith, this supreme being is called Radha Swami. The exponents of this faith hold that this holy name has been given out by the supreme being himself and as it is refulgently resounding within the higher spheres, it can be heard by a person who practices Surat Shabd Yoga. The second guru, Hazur Maharaj, used to address his guru as Radha Swami Sahib. When Hazur Maharaj practiced the spiritual exercise of Surat Shabd Yoga and attained the highest spiritual truth, he listened internally to the refulgent resonance of Radha Swami incessantly resounding in the first and highest region of creation and found his guru identical with the highest spiritual being. He was then filled with divine grace and holy light of love. As such, he addressed him as Radha Swami Sahib, addressed his master, in other words, as Radha Swami Sahib and considered him to be the incarnation of the Supreme Being. It was Hazur Maharaj who revealed the name Radha Swami after he realized in his deep meditation practice not only that Swamiji Maharaj was identical with Radha Swami, the Supreme Being, but also that Radha Swami is an ever reverberating sound coming from the highest abode. That's a paragraph by Agam Prasad Mathur in his great book called Petals of Love. Swamiji tested his disciple and he found that Hazura was capable of spreading his spiritual message. The disciple had realized the master and the master had also recognized the spiritual perfection and glow of the disciple. He recognized in Hazura Maharaj his own spiritual counterpart and on a special request of Hazura Swamiji Maharaj established the Satsang in 1861. In all eternal radiance, Swamiji Maharaj bestowed upon him the most precious and sacred gift, the revelation of the name Radha Swami. It was the name that Huzur gave to Swamiji Maharaj after inner realization that his guru was identical with the Supreme Being. The object of Hazur's life had been achieved and he felt contented as never before. Later, in 1866, at Hazur Maharaja's 
stance, Swamiji Maharaj revealed the holy name Radhaswami to his followers. That's a quote from Agam Prasad Mathur in the book Petals of Love on how the name was internally realized by Hazur Maharaj, who called his spiritual master, Swamiji Maharaj, by that name between the two of them. And then in 1866, that name was revealed to the other satsangis. And the rest is history. The name of the group became the Radhaswami Satsang. And that all commenced, this revelation of the name Radhaswami commenced in 1866. And the rest is history. Simran, Radhaswami Nam, whosoever recites, gets across the ocean of life, troubles vanish, bliss abides, and gone, complete, all strife. Chanting the name Radhaswami, you have to walk with me, with my spirit, with my radiation. Receive my radiation first, then you can enjoy every radiation with right understanding and without being submerged and drowned in the current of attraction and repulsion they call maya or illusion. Always carry my reflection, my aura or reflection is the sum total, energy, and my spirit of the universe. I am all strength and courage. I am all love and mercy. I am the potential of all talents. I am the source of all riches. I am the light of all wisdom. I am that truth of all truths. All exist in me, as they are part of me, and I exist in all of them. They are nothing but me. You will see that I am vibrating everywhere, not only as light waves, but also as sound waves, as the creative force as the procreative force, as the force of all expansion. I am the creation force, Ra. I am the expanding force, Da. I come back with all the vibrations, Swam. I become again one with you all, and you feel one with me, as E. Radha Swami, Radha Swami, Radha Swami. A reading from the Discourses of Sri Mentu Maharaj, Volume 1, on the name Radhaswami. More spiritual awakening coming up. Today, an introduction to the teachings of the Radhaswami faith on Spiritual Awakening Radio. Every week at this time, this program streams live by way of HealthyLife.net, the positive talk radio network, and soon becomes a podcast. Before I get to my final readings today, some contact information. Earlier I mentioned that the writings of Swamiji Maharaj are available for free on the web and many other books of the Radhaswami faith. To receive a link to the Radhaswami section of my e-library, send me an email at this address, james at spiritualawakeningradio.com james at spiritualawakeningradio.com More from the Discourses of Sri Mentu Maharaj on the sacred name Radhaswami. Radhaswami, 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 Radhaswami. Chant this name, this is me in sound form. Enjoy me in sound form as the magnetic field of love. Radha Swami. Radha Swami. Radha Swami.
The following is from Prem Bani Radhaswami, Volume 1, a collection of hymns composed by Hazur Maharaj. The Supreme Father Radhaswami Dayal, the compassionate, merciful Lord of the soul, loves you dearly. He will redeem you in an instant. Know that Radhaswami is your true beloved. His heart is overflowing with compassion for souls. He imparts to them his own strength and redeems them. Have no anxiety or worry in your mind now. Utter Radhaswami, Radhaswami, Radhaswami. Every moment, always utter Radhaswami, the name of the compassionate Supreme Being. Only then will mind and call become powerless against you. Radhaswami is my most beloved Lord. None other than He comes to mind. I sing praises of Radhaswami again and again and shall remain at His holy feet, ever alert and vigilant. I discard all the evil tendencies of the mind and enshrine Radhaswami Nam in my heart. I sing Radhaswami, Radhaswami, Radhaswami every moment. This is from the Sarbachan Radhaswami Poetry, a collection of hymns composed by Swamiji Maharaj. Radhaswami has imparted a unique message. The moment I utter the holy word Radhaswami, all my doubts and misgivings are dispelled. Radhaswami has taken me in his lap. Radhaswami will also redeem you. Repeat the holy word Radhaswami all the time. Recite Radhaswami all the 24 hours. Radhaswami dwells in my heart every moment. Some verses about Simran practice, the repetition of the divine name from Swamiji Maharaj from the Sarbachan Radhaswami Poetry, Book 1. The following is on Surit Shabd Yoga practice. Surit Shabd Yoga is the spiritual practice of the Radhaswami faith, and for Sant Mat in general, that's the meditation practice. It literally means the attention faculty of the soul becoming yoked to or becoming one with the divine inner light and sound. Surit Shabd Yoga. This is from the Sarbachan Radhaswami poetry. Lovers of the Beloved. Souls or jivas are being roasted in the fire of separation from the Beloved Lord. How may they feel cool and centered? Without the rainfall of the discourses of the Beloved Lord, all freshness has departed. The faces of those who are delighted with the company of their beloved Lord are radiant with love. They are cool and happy at heart, and hear inner sounds, anhad shabs, resounding within themselves. And the final reading today comes from Sarbachan Radhaswami Prose, Book 1, First Paragraph. This world is perishable, and so also is all that pertains to it. A wise man is he who, having closely examined the nature of existence here, has realized that it is all transitory and illusory, and has consecrated his human form by devoting himself to bhajan and simran, listening to the inner sounds and the repetition of the holy name of the Supreme Being, and who, taking the fullest advantage of the various faculties which the Supreme Father has graciously endowed him with, has translated the invaluable jewel within himself, which is surat or spirit, or the essence of his being, back to its original abode. <laughs> 